So let's have a look at the image crop part of it. Um, back to uh, the beautiful UI here. You'll notice that when I do this, this image crop will pop up and we talked about where to get the directive that's already installed and ready to use. But how do we actually make it work inside the HTML and inside the, the actual controller of the settings controller. So back here, let's, uh, I moved down to line 36 and in here we have the image crop and in there it has an, again, I'm, I'm deciding if I want to show it or not. And in this case, I'm only showing if, if there actually is an original image and the user does not have a photo. So this means that if the user already have a photo, I don't want him to be able to crop it. He has to upload the image again. That's just my choice. And uh, if there is already selected an image, it's converted into base 64, then I can actually show it right here. So what we need to specify for the image crop to work is first of all the tag of image crop. We need to specify the image that we want to crop, which is original image, makes sense. We need to specify what image we want to end up with, which is actually the cropped image. And notice I have an image here which has two um, children. And let me just show you where that is actually specified in the code. On the scope I have an image, it has original image and a cropped image. So that's how those are set up. I'm deciding if I want an area of a, of a, a circle or I want an area of a, of a square. So let me just add it the square one instead, just to show you that you can actually change that right here. Going back to the code, clicking, selecting this guy, and now I can actually choose a square instead, right? So just to show you, that's a, that's a possibility as well. I'm going back to the circle, I just like that more for a profile picture. Then it asks, what kind of files do you accept? And again, I'm only accepting images in my case. It asks, what's the size of the image you want to get out of this? And in my case, I say, I say 250, let's say 350 instead. And you'll notice that I just get a bigger area to select from. Um, so the image grows, right? So I get a bigger image to work with. That's what that is all about. Let me go back, change on the fly. I actually changed this. Um, I couldn't make his example work. So I changed his code, Patrick Riley's code, into change on the fly here to get an instant reply as soon as I made any change so that I knew I had the newest data inside, um, inside my actually cropped image. That might be a problem, but I don't think it is because I didn't see any performance increase by doing it, so I think it would work fine. You can go and read about the property on the image crop um, page on GitHub. And then the last is, of course, I'm adding a Dropbox container so that I get some kind of good look and feel. So let's go to the controller and have a look at what happens when we get a result image. Because this will actually, every time I move because I made this change on the fly available, it'll change the crop image to look some, some different way. And I need to, of course, be able to save my image. That's the next step. Now I've decided that the image looks great. Let me try and go back and crop it again here. I'll do this until I find, oh, this is the perfect image I have right here. And then I'll do a save photo. And what actually happens when I do the save photo? That's the next step. The save photo part is right below here. It's just a button. It'll be shown if we're not loading, if we have an original image, <clears throat> if we don't have a user photo, it'll be disabled as we're loading. And when I click it, I'll hit the upload functionality. 